Hiros von Borki was a Prussian soldier who lived in the Pomeranian province of Prussia, which right now would be in western Poland, just south of the Baltic Sea. And he learned the military trade as a Prussian officer, became very interested in, in what was happening in our country. He left uh, Germany, went to uh, England to catch a ship, landed in Abaco in Nassau, and in the process of coming there, lost his papers of introduction, could not speak English. And uh, he, uh, he was finally able to come from Nassau through the blockade into Charleston, South Carolina. When he arrived, I guess in his broken English, he indicated that he was a soldier, he was a cavalryman, and he had a great big sword to prove it. And they moved him immediately uh, to join up with General Jeb Stuart just prior to the Battle of Seven Pines uh, west of Richmond. He was given the rank of major when he served with Stuart. He served with them the better part of two years, principally as a staff officer. Uh, Stuart used him a great deal to carry information and messages from his headquarters to General Jackson and to General Lee, uh, who he got to know very well. And uh, he was involved also in the battles, including the Brandy Station, the Battle of Seven Pines, and several others. Uh, it, is, it is said that Major Heroes von Borki had one of the largest swords that any, anybody uh, had known of a military man. It was a large, almost a Scottish looking broadsword that he was able to pick up and handle with one hand. Uh, von Borker's sword uh, was made in his native Germany through the Solingen Guild, which is a very old guild system of sword makers uh, in Germany and Prussia. Engraved on the blade is his family crest. Uh, the blade is a long 36 inches and weighs in at a hefty 3.8 pounds. In 1884, uh, when Harris von Borke came back to the United States to visit some of his old comrades and do a tour of the South, uh, he left the sword and his sash with the Robert E. Lee Camp uh, veterans, some of the veterans that he had served with during the war. Uh, those veterans later gave the sword to the Library of Virginia. Uh, and the Library of Virginia in turn donated it to the Museum of the Confederacy, where it now resides. Uh, he used to talk about how he loved to, the cavalry charge where he could chop on his enemy and wipe the blood from the sword on the mane of his horse. General Stuart and Vaughn, as he called him, had an incredibly close and tight relationship. They were both good soldiers, they both trusted each other, and they both admired each other. Uh, on one occasion, uh, Stuart, uh, there was time in camp to have some relaxation and uh, Heros von Borke dressed up as a woman for a pantomime skit. And after that, Stuart said, Vaughn, when I think about you in my later life, I will never, never forget the day you put on a dress and participated in that skit. Uh, there's another interesting story too that uh, as part of Major von Borke's duties, he had to um, bring messages and dispatches from Stuart's headquarters to General Jackson, General Lee. He got to know General Jackson and admired him tremendously and really was in awe of him. And one time he told him in very broken English that uh, whenever he met General Jackson, it gave him heartburn. He, what he meant to say what it warmed his heart. And General Stuart never let him forget about that. He was wounded, terribly wounded, in the Battle of Middleburg in 1863. His wound was so severe that he was unable to participate in military activities after that. He came to Richmond and stayed there until the spring of 1865 when he went back to his country and learned later on that the surrender had taken place at Appomattox with Robert E. Lee. But uh, Vaughn also went back to Germany, and, uh, or Prussia as it was called then, uh, served a short time in the Prussian-Austrian uh, War in 1866, but realized that he was incapable of field duty and then retired completely from that service. But he flew a Confederate flag from his home uh, for the remainder of his life. It was a great pleasure to uh, be invited by uh, Major Heros von Borke's great-grandson, Eckert, uh, to see if I would participate in a memorial service at the mausoleum where he's buried in Poland. And of course, I immediately said, yes, this would be a trip of a lifetime. I was able to go there in late August of 2008 with my son, Jeb V, who's an orthopedic surgeon and in his mid-40s now. And the two of us had an opportunity to take part in that beautiful ceremony in Giesenbruch, Poland, 
uh, where he was buried and uh, to see the mausoleum. Major Heros von Borki was a remarkable man and a very strong man and a very capable man and loved adventure and conflict.